and the right to transfer questions as it sees fit. So we'll proceed today at order, order, and I'm happy to meet the member after question time to further discuss that matter. So we move now to question. We move to question number one in the name of the Leader of the Opposition, David Shearer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question now to the Minister of State and Enterprises. Has the government met the five criteria that the Prime Minister laid out for proceeding with asset sales? Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, yes. In particular, uh, one criteria was that New Zealand investors uh, would be at the front of the queue and that we would need to be confident of widespread and substantial New Zealand share ownership. At 10 o'clock this morning, the number of New Zealanders who had pre-registered their interest in Mighty River Power went over four hundred thousand. Yes. Yes. Order. 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 When, when Supplementary Prime... question, David Shearer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. When the Prime Minister said that the third criteria would be that companies would need to present good investment opportunities for investors, with which international investors had the Prime Minister had discussions with that have yet to be made public? Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, with respect to that answer, of course, I'm not able to tell him exactly uh, who the Prime Minister has spoken to, uh, nor am I able to comment on the nature of the investment at this time. So, Order, Mr Speaker. Point but, Mr Speaker, this just illustrates the inability of the government to be able to answer a well, order, question no, from the opposition. The, the minister addressed the question. He said un unable to relate to conversation. Does the member have further supplementaries? Supplementary question, David Shearer. When the Prime Minister said that the second criteria would be that New Zealand invest investors would need to be at the front of the queue for shareholding, from which of his former colleagues from financial markets had he received briefings on this issue? Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, look, I, I don't think the Prime Minister needs any briefings from people on putting New Zealanders at the front of the queue, because that's what this government has done. 400,000 people have pre-registered. They know that by pre-registering, they are entitled to more shares than those New Zealanders who don't pre-register. And they know that there Point will be... Order. Point of order. Speaker, that was a really straight question, and this is not in any way close to the to an answer. And, and it was adequately addressed. The difficulty I think the members got is the barrage of interjection coming from immediately behind it. Order. 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 Does the member have a further yes, I do, Mr. supplementary question, David? Chair. What warning did the Finance Minister give to the Prime Minister about issues arising from the contact energy float? Honourable Tony uh, Ryle. Mr. Speaker, look, I know that the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister have had a large number of discussions over the government's mixed ownership model program. I'm sure the most recent discussion they will have is about the 400,000 New Zealanders who have expressed an interest in pre-registering for shares in Mighty River Power. Point of order, Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I invite you to rule whether that question was addressed. What rulings did the what, what warnings, warnings did the finance minister give? I invite the in member. To I invite the energy? member, the leader of the opposition, to re-ask that question. What order. warning did the minister of finance give to the prime minister about issues arising from the contact energy float? Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, I have not been in a, uh, any conversations where the Finance Minister has given any warnings to the Prime Minister. What I do know is that the Finance Minister will have told the Prime Minister that there were many New Zealanders who have expressed an interest in owning shares in Contact Energy, and it still has one of the biggest share registries of New Zealanders Point of, of any order. company on the stock exchange. Order, order, I'll hear from David. Mr. David Spe Mr. Speaker, that was not anywhere near. That answer was not anywhere near the the question, and it illustrates the fact that if these are going to be transferred to a lower minister that they will not be able order. to know what's happening order. in the, That's in the mind not a of the point Prime of order. Minister. That's not a point of order. Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Well, Mr Speaker, here is, the, here is the real problem here, is that the 
opposition have not accepted that the question lodged in the first place was inadequate to stand for the Prime Minister, but most appropriately answered by the Minister for State and Enterprises. So, order. This is a point of order, and it should be heard in silence. So, showing his inability to shift the order. script, the member needs to uh, recognise that if he keeps asking his pre-prepared questions to the wrong minister, he won't get anywhere near the answers he wants. Point of order, Chris Hipkins. Mr Speaker, the Opposition do have a right to question the Prime Minister, and the Speaker's rulings, and particularly the rulings of your, the previous Speaker, were quite clear that the more specific the question, the more specific the answer we could expect was. It's very difficult to answer the, ask the Prime Minister a specific question if the minute we put something specific in it, he uses that excuse to duck order. from it. I've, I've heard sufficient. At this stage, I've said to the Honourable Trevor Mallard, with the point he raised, I will have a look at that matter. It was accepted at the start that this question was put to the Minister for State-Owned Enterprises. That's where the supplementary questions are going. And in my mind, that question was answered quite adequately on the basis of the question that was asked by the Leader of the Opposition. Point of order, Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, can I just ask then that in uh, considering your ruling, you do look at the video and tell us uh, what the warnings were that Bill English gave to John Key. So that was not order, answered. Order. The Minister, when he answered, said he was unaware of any warnings. It couldn't have been clearer than that. Order. You are now, we are now getting to the point where we're relitigating a ruling that I've made. If it's a fresh point of order, I will hear from it. Honourable Speaker, Trevor Mallard, I was, fresh I was, standing, I was standing to agree with you. It was impossible for the state-owned enterprises minister to know what was in those briefings. That was the point that I made at the beginning when I questioned the transfer. He could not answer for what was in the Prime Minister's mind. It is always very comforting when the Honourable Trevor Mallard rises to agree with me. Are there further supplementaries from David Chera? There are none. A supplementary question to our level. Tenoke, Mr Speaker, kia ora tato. Uh, to the Minister. Will the Minister make it part of his key criteria moving forward uh, to ensure that the prospectus for the asset sales will, quote, clearly and prominently explain that the Crown's decision regarding its 51 per cent shareholding must be consistent with the principles of the treaty? Order. And how will this advice be enacted? Honourable uh, Tony Ryle. Mr Speaker, the Government uh, has made it clear what its obligations are. Uh, with respect to both the law and the views of the Supreme Court. Supplementary question, Honourable John Banks. Could the, could Order. The, I want to hear the question. Could the Minister of State Owned Enterprises tell me if funds could be used from a secret bank account in New York to purchase shares uh, in this IPO? Legitimate question, Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, that's a very good question uh, because uh, if a New Zealander was registered and uh, as pre-registered one of the 400,000 uh, and they were able to get the benefits of that pre-registration in terms of their shares, uh, they would have to pay for them. We would be unclear of whether the bank account was secret or not, but we would presume people would actually know they had a bank account. <laughs> Question number two, Dr. Russell Norman. Order. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dr. Speaker. Russell Norman. Uh,